Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. So in this video, I wanted to raise something to give you to think about, which you may find very interesting. As lawyers, we very often take two bits of information and combine them and then come up with a third thought or idea or concept or argument and so on. So I'll do that with you in this video. So here's the notion. On the 16th of May, Amber Heard's lawyers filed a motion with the judge to seal the names of the jury for one year. I'll come back to more detail on that in a moment. However, coincidentally, the limitation period within which an individual must bring a claim for defamation is also one year. So that might suggest that if there was any defamation of the jury as a group or any member of the jury within that year, they might struggle to bring an action in defamation because their names and identities have been sealed by the judge. So I'm going to talk about both the motion itself and whether or not a group can bring an action for defamation or whether a group can be defamed, whether an individual within that group can be defamed and of course whether a jury could be defamed in the same way. And before going into the details of those, I'm going to fulfill a promise to Andy Signor at Popcorn Planet as a thanks for having me on his channel yesterday for the live stream and ask you, the viewers, after this video to go to his petition linked in the description below, which is to restore the Michael Jackson episode into The Simpsons called Stark Raving Dad. You can see more detail written by Andy and his video linked in the description below. So please go and sign that after this video and tell him that you did so and tell him I sent you. So now back to the motion for C the identity of the jurors and whether or not a jury could be defamed. So the judge didn't explain the ruling any further from the 16th of May motion to seal the identity of the jury. But there was a handwritten note on the judge's order by one of Depp's lawyers which might cryptically give some information as to why they wanted that to be sealed. The New York Post reports that this note read agreed as to the proposed relief but objecting to and not agreeing to the characterizations as to Mr Depp's interactions with his fans etc. So that suggests that this motion was filed perhaps with the idea that Johnny Depp's fans might try to make contact with the jurors and so on. Or perhaps, and this is a speculation, just perhaps it might have something to do with the fact that the limitation period for defamation claims is also coincidentally one year. So let's now look at whether or not you can defame a group such as a jury. Now the starting point is that you would not be able to defame an entire group because it would usually be difficult to identify any one person within that group and whether any one person is defamed and whether one person can bring an action. However, as usual, it's not quite as simple as that. Both in the US and in the United Kingdom, if the group or the class of people is small enough that the reader or the listener of a statement can reasonably understand to whom that statement refers, and they can reasonably infer that that statement refers to that person based on the characteristics and the circumstances of the publication, then either the group or the individual may well be able to bring an action for defamation based on the contents of that statement, depending, of course, what the statement says and the meaning which can be inferred. For example, such allegations might include those which would harm a person's trade, profession or professional standing, or perhaps allegations of entering a criminal activity, by way of example. Taking an example of a group that was sufficiently defined that the group or members of that group might be able to bring an action for defamation, let's say that the statement was about a particular team and named the team and said that one specific element, defensive players, offensive players, and so on, if the defamatory statement said that all members within that category, let's say, took drugs or were responsible for some criminal activity and so on, then although it's referring to a group of people, it might still be sufficiently defined that anybody listening to or reading that statement would reasonably know to whom that statement refers. Now, generally speaking, there is no specific size of a group defined by law, but generally cases that have been successful have included up to 25 or fewer people. So now let's look at the communication and the statement and the meaning of that themselves. So the meaning of a communication is generally what the recipient will understand it to be. 
the recipient may be incorrect in that understanding. However, if that understanding, albeit incorrect, is a reasonable one, then that incorrect understanding is going to be taken generally as the meaning of that communication. Similarly, the recipient's understanding of the communication as regards to whom that statement refers is also going to be taken as defining the people defamed by the statement. So all in all, I think there is a good possibility in normal circumstances that a jury or a member of that jury could bring an action in defamation. But it's interesting in this case that their names have been sealed for one year, which is the same duration as the limitation period for bringing a claim in defamation. And so that would go against the notion of defamation itself, because without the person's name being known, of course, they cannot be defamed. But after this one year period, when their name is known, this is going to be outside of the limitation period. So hypothetically, even if a defamatory statement were made and a jury member wanted to bring an action for defamation, they would have that argument, firstly, that they can bring an action whilst their name remains under seal, and secondly, establishing that harm has been caused whilst their name has been sealed and, of course, no one yet knows who they are. So I thought this was a very interesting legal conundrum regarding this trial, particularly with the upcoming interviews which are eagerly awaited today and in the next few days. So as always, leave me your thoughts and your comments about this in the box below. Please do smash the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I really do appreciate that. I'm thankful to you all for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. And with that, I thank you for watching and have a great day.